Hi, this is David at Mash IT. Now, following on from our recent M17 R4 review, we're going to do in a bit more of a uh, in-depth look at the performance and the Anyway Command Center today. Now, there will be timestamps down below, so you can click to any section you particularly want to look at, and we will be going quite in depth. So, if this isn't of interest to you, by all means, skip it and go to the sections that you want. Now, to start with, I've had a few questions about Anyway Command Center, so we're going to go just through some of the main features of this piece of software, and then we're going to start looking at the profiles that Anywhere offer. Right, so first we're going to look at the Anywhere Command Center. I've opened it up. You can see we're on the home screen at the moment, and we're on the default profiles. This is as it comes out of the box. Now, I have already let it scan my system for the games that I've previously installed, and what you can do is you can set each of these games to launch an actual profile. But what we're going to quickly look at is this bottom row here, because there's a lot of that you can do from the home screen, which is quite useful. Firstly, on the default profile, if we just drop this little down arrow there, we can change the FX themes if we've created any. You can go dim or you can go dark, and it's a quite a quick way to change the lighting on your system. Now, if we move across one, you'll see that it says overclock. If we click on that there, at the moment we've got overclock off. There's also an overclock one and an overclock two profile created by Alienware, plus you can create a custom one as well and pop that in there. Um, I don't personally use the Alienware overclocks, so I do my own, but that might be useful to some people. Across to the right again, we've got the thermal profiles, and this is what we will be looking at in more detail in a second. Now, it always comes as balanced out of the box, but you have quiet, cool, performance, and full speed as well. We're going to have a quick look at how those impact the actual CPU performance in a second. Across to the right, we've got the audio tab, and from within here, you can change the EQ of your sound card. And lastly, on the right, we have the power settings. Now this is just duplicating your Windows power settings. So I'll normally just set this in Windows myself anyway, but you can change it from within here as well. Now, before we go into the actual profiles, which is what we want to look at, I'm going to just quickly go across the very top here. So as you can see, we're going to start at home. You can pop into library. Now, you can get it to scan all your games and it'll bring them into this library. And from within here, you can create a thermal profile, a sound profile, and a power profile for each game and then launch it. And it will launch the game from within here with the profiles that you've selected. So this is quite a nice little feature. So if you've got a game that isn't very demanding, you don't need to necessarily put it on high performance. You may not want to have the fans cranking up. But if you've got a AAA title, you might want to crank the fans up and put some overclocking on. So that's nice that you can do that for each game individually. Now, if we go across to the FX tab, it's from within here that we can adjust all the lighting for the system. So if you click on the little lighting tab here, you can choose either the keyboard or the, the lighting ring and power buttons and the alien head on the back, and you can select the color. So if I quickly go to the keyboard and click all keys, and I'm gonna choose a color, I'll just choose green as an example, and I can then unselect that, and I can now individually change particular key colors that I wish. So I can choose different colors for each key if I wish. Now this might be quite handy if you want to just light up your WASD keys or your cursor keys or maybe your function keys. One of my personal favorites is the rainbow wave setting. It's what I use on a lot of the videos. And the rainbow wave just ripples through the colors across the keyboard. And on this white model, I think it does look really quite nice. So I very often leave mine on this. If you do find it distracting, just change it to a single color. And then last tab is fusion. Now from within Fusion, it's quite good. You, it's obviously got some system monitoring tools. You can actually overclock the GPU from within here. And I believe if you buy the top spec uh, Core i9 model, you can actually overclock the CPU. But because I've got the i7, it's actually locked. I cannot touch the CPU from within here. You can also change the fan profiles. And you can turn the thermal limit on the GPU. Unfortunately, you can only turn it down, not up but it's at 87 anyway, which is quite high for a GPU. And you can actually overclock your GPU from within here. Personally, I do it from within MSI Afterburner because I find that more reliable for me because I like to undervolt as well. You can see from here, there's some default overclocks. If I click overclock two, you can see that it's actually already overclocked the GPU as part of that overclock two profile. They've only overclocked it by 50 megahertz on the GPU core and 100 megahertz on the RAM. So let's be honest, it's quite a conservative overclock. You're probably gonna want to do it yourself anyway. Now, if we click down to the uh, thermometer, you can see from within here, it tells you the CPU fan and the system fan. You can adjust the fans yourself from within here as well, which is quite good. Personally, I leave it alone and use the profiles to actually set a fan profile. But if you want your own particular fan profile, you can create it and save it as a profile. 
So now we're going to have a quick look through these actual thermal profiles. This is quite an important section from within the command center. Now, out of the box, it turns the thermal profile to balanced. Now, I've only got the mid-ranged i7 8-core processor and the 3070 NVIDIA card. I don't get any throttling on the actual balanced profile on this Anywhere command center. It allows the CPU to run at its full 106 watts at full load across all eight cores at 4 gigahertz. And it allows the actual uh, GPU to run flat out at 140 watts and I don't get any throttling. If you turn it to full speed or performance, you don't get any extra performance, but the fans do get louder. Now, the only benefit you're going to see is you're going to get a cooler system. Now, as an example, in our original review on the balance profile, we were hitting about 49 decibels, which is quite loud for a gaming laptop. This is quite a loud gaming laptop, but it's because it gives you the full 96 watts of performance on this CPU and a full 140 watts on the GPU, which is one of the higher ends. Well, it is the highest end you can get on this GPU in a laptop, but obviously it is allowed to do that. If you want the laptop quieter, you've got two choices. You have got cool or you've got quiet. Now, firstly, I'm going to look at the quiet mode. So you just click it to the quiet mode. Fans instantly start dying down. Now, how this behaves, it will still turbo boost up to about 100 watts initially for its short-term turbo boost, but it will quickly drop you back down to 45 watts. Now, on any of the higher profiles, you will stay at 106 watts indefinitely in my testing so far. It's really quite impressive, but obviously you've got the fan noise to, to match that. Now on the quieter mode, it drops it down to about 46, 47 decibels, but obviously at 45 watts on the actual CPU. The GPU is not affected and it still runs at this full 140 watts. Now in the games that I've been playing around and testing in, I found it runs, for me, just as well on the quiet profile as it does on the actual performance, max fans, or even the balance setting. So if you do prefer a quiet laptop, recommend it instantly, pop it on the quiet. Maybe if you're running a heavier game, or maybe if you've got the i9 or the 3080, you might want to up that to sort of performance mode if you want higher performance. Now if we switch it to cool, it runs quite similarly to quiet in that it caps the actual CPU wattage to 45 watts, but it will allow the fans to run faster. So what that will give you is a slightly noisier, but very cooler machine. Now this machine doesn't get overly hot on the actual keyboard, but as I said, I've got the sort of middle spec. Maybe if you're running a 3080 and a 99 overclocked, this might get hot on the keyboard. By switching to that profile, it'll allow this keyboard to cool off better. So just to give you an idea of the difference in CPU performance between the cool and the quiet, and then the performance modes and the balance modes, you're losing approximately 25% CPU performance in Cinebench, which is obviously maxing out all eight cores. Now, obviously it's doing it at 100, 106 watts. You're getting about a score of 4,000 marks in Cinebench R20. Whereas in the quiet or the cool mode, you're getting about 3,000 points. So you are, you're losing about 25% in performance, but it is a much quieter system. And in all honesty, when you're gaming, you're very rarely maxing out all eight cores, all of them you know, pegged to the limit. So Cinebench is quite unrealistic for gaming. So you may want to have it on performance if you're rendering videos or you're doing something where you really want the, all those eight cores maxed out. But for gaming, I think for the majority of people, you'll get away with a quiet system by using the cool or the quiet mode. Okay, so now we're going to look at undervolting quickly. Now, Alienware is one of the few manufacturers that have not locked out undervolting on these Intel CPUs. So good job there, Alienware. What I'm going to do is I'm first going to run a throttle stop bench using default power profile and show you with throttle stop running without an undervolt the power that it's using on this actual CPU. Because of the vapor chamber and the decent cooling solution in this Alienware, it'll allow it to run multiple runs of Cinebench at its full 106 or 105 watts of power to get the eight cores running at its maximum 40 times multiplier across all of the cores fully maxed out. Now 105 watts is a lot of wattage to be pushing through this laptop, but it handles it quite easily. But we're going to undervolt it, which although it's not going to actually boost our scores like very often undervolting does, it will bring our temps down a little bit and bring our fan noise down a little bit. And that's the one thing with this laptop, it does get loud. So I've completed a run, as you can see, 105 watts all the way through. We get a good score in Cinebench. Now I'm going to go to throttle stop and I'm going to go to the FIVR tab. and I'm going to actually undervolt the CPU core and the CPU cache by 0.9 millivolts. I'm going to hit apply and I'm going to run the actual throttle stop again. Now, as you can see, the throttle stop is running and we do get the 40 times multipliers. But rather than 105 watts we had previously, we are now getting 75 watts. 
So that's a big difference in actual perform uh, wattage through the system. Now, it isn't gonna make the temperatures any lower in this case, because what Alienware does is it allows it to boost right up before it fires the fans up at a higher speed. So what this is gonna ultimately do for us is provide a slightly quieter machine. And because these are quite noisy fans in these gaming laptops, that's good for everybody. Now, where you're gonna see increased performance in throttle stop uh, by undervolting is if you set it to the quiet tab now by setting it to the quiet tab, you're maxed out at 45 watts for long-term boost. Now obviously that'll give you about 28 multipliers across all the cores if you're maxing it out. Then by undervolting it, that'll give you about an extra 300 megahertz per core in clock speed for pretty much for free. So it's definitely, definitely well worth undervolting for not only a quiet system, but for a bit more performance if you're on the quiet profile. Now, although this laptop has an incredibly powerful 3070 graphics card at 140 watts, that still doesn't stop me wanting to actually overclock the machine. So, using MSI Afterburner, I'm just gonna put on a very basic overclock of 150 on the core and 200 on the actual memory. I'm gonna run through time spy without the overclock and then with the overclock, and then you can see the benchmark results and we can see how big a difference we're gonna get from that. Now, from the original review, at balanced mode, Without an overclock, we got a graphic score of 10,648 in Time Spy, which is an incredible score, don't get me wrong, but I'm still gonna try and improve on that. So with our basic overclock of 150 on the core and 200 in memory, it boosts us up to 11,402. That's an incredible score for a 3070. And considering you're still within the same 140 watt thermal budget, you're basically almost undervolting the card effectively. So you're getting more performance for the same wattage. So in my opinion, it's well worth doing this just to eke out a little bit of extra performance. Now the last thing we want to look at in this deep dive of performance is the thermal control circuits, the TCC. This is a new option that Alienware have put into the BIOS which will basically cap the CPU when it hits a certain temperature range. Now by default the CPU will thermal throttle when it hits 100C but you can go into BIOS, you can do anything from 0 to 15 in the BIOS settings and what they'll do is give you an offset so it'll either be 100 or right the way down to 85 degrees. So if you pop in 15 in the BIOS when you're back into Windows and you're utilizing that CPU when you hit 85 degrees C it will start thermal throttling that CPU to keep you at that sort of level. Now realistically this isn't something that I would personally use because I would naturally use throttle stop to sort of do my own sort of performance capping if I wanted to, I wouldn't do it in BIOS. But for somebody that's not so comfortable with using software and just wants to just put this in and leave it in, this is quite a nice way of capping the CPU and never letting it to get too hot. Now with the i7-8 core that I've got in this machine, I found that the only time that it ever hit past 85C was when using synthetic benchmarks or video editing, something that's utilizing all CPU cores 100%. During gaming, we didn't notice any difference, so changing the actual TCC for our gaming purposes made no difference for us. That's not to say if you don't have an i9 and a 3080, you probably are gonna be hitting those temps, so therefore it might be useful to you. So this is something they're gonna revisit when we get either a more powerful machine or maybe a slightly weaker cooling system in the M15 we've got coming on the way. But looking at the synthetic benchmarks, where it's utilizing the 100% CPU cores, by knocking it down to 85, we were getting some actual intended throttling through this TCC, and it was knocking off a good few hundred points in our Cinebench score. This isn't something I personally would want to use, but again, we will revisit this again with a higher performance system, and we will try it again and see if it's something that we can recommend. But at the moment, I would definitely recommend you use something like Throttle Stop to do the same job that you can do on the fly. So just to conclude this deep dive in performance, obviously this is an incredibly powerful laptop, but as gaming laptops usually do, it gets quite loud. By doing a few of the tweaks that we've done here, we can get the noise right down on this actual laptop by switching it to quiet mode, by undervolting the actual GPU and the actual CPU, you can get it pretty quiet for a gaming laptop. You can also undervolt it and heavily overclock the GPU and have an incredible amount of performance from this laptop. The main thing to bear in mind is you need to remember to actually switch the thermal profiles within the Anywhere Command Center. If you know which one you want per game, you can certainly go in and add it to each game and it will do it for you on the fly. Now hopefully this has answered a lot of your questions about the performance on this laptop. If you want me to actually explain anything in further detail, if you've got any questions, please pop it down in the comment sections down below. If you'd like me to cover anything in more detail, also pop it down below and we'll see what we can do for you. And finally, thank you for watching.